Cabinet held its ordinary meeting in Cape Town on the 7th of November this year. Amongst others, Cabinet approved the recommendations to strengthen and align public procurement to the National Industrial Program. Cabinet also welcomed the report on tourism performance for the period January to June 2012, as South Africa recorded a 10.5% increase of tourist arrival when compared with the same period last year. Tourist arrivals were in the main from the key emerging markets such as China, Brazil, and India. And Cabinet commended the work done by the Department of Tourism with its relevant partners in achieving these results. Cabinet also approved the policy on the establishment of the Office of the Valuer General. The office will be, independent, will be an independent statutory body <coughs> responsible in the main for valuing land nationwide and to keep collated hub of property values. It will facilitate the effective collection of better land market information and more effective regulations of the property valuation industry. Cabinet also approved entering into and submission of the treaties with the United Mexican State on the extradition and mutual legal assistance in criminal matters <coughs> and the Republic of Korea on the extradition and mutual legal assistance criminal matters to Parliament respectively. Cabinet also received a report uh, progress report on the payment of service providers within 30 days. This report, you'll recall that uh, it was the Department of Performance Monitoring and Evaluation was requested by the President to, to ensure that we, we have improvement in that area. And working with Treasury, a system has been set up in National Treasury to track compliance by national and provincial departments. We are satisfied with the responses received from departments on utilizing the system. We are still testing the system and will in due course give much accurate reporting on the payment of suppliers within the prescribed period. And Cabinet approved that all the accounting officers and the chief financial officers should should they have this as part of their deliverables in the performance agreements from next year. And Cabinet approved the co-hosting of the following conferences. <coughs> the third all Africa Conference on Environment, Environmental Health <coughs> in November 2012 by the Department of Health and the South African Institute of Environmental Health. The Commonwealth Conference on Youth no, on Education and Training of Youth Workers in South Africa on the, from the 13th to the 15th of March next year. Cabinet also approved the submission of the amendment of the Annex 5 and 6 of the Trade and Development and Cooperation Agreement between South Africa and the European Community and its member states. Cabinet was given a progress report on the COP17 agreements. South Africa is a participant in the ad hoc working group for enhanced action which seeks to create a legal agreement under the convention that will be applicable to all parties. Cabinet was further briefed on the proposed negotiating mandate to serve as a basis for South Africa's engagement at the COP18 CMP8 in Doha from the 26th of November to the 7th of December 2012. And Cabinet has also approved the mandate which will serve as a basis for the discussions by our negotiators. As part of monitoring and evaluation, we also track down the agreements which uh, the country have reached with various states and multilateral institutions. DERCO has submitted the first report which was noted by Cabinet on the update in that regard on our international ag mm -hmm. agreements, obligations and treaties under the multilateral ag agreements. 
international treaties and conventions and agreements to which South Africa is a party present a strategic platform for the advancement of the country's national priorities and policy, foreign policy objectives. It is therefore within this context that Cabinet is regularly presented with an update report on the status of the compliance in the implementation of these agreements. Cabinet also approved the draft revised white paper guiding South African participation in international peace missions. Cabinet noted South Africa's position for the 24th meeting on parties to Montreal Protocol on Ozone Depletion Substances. South Africa's position supports the amendment to the Montreal Protocol and condition that South Africa works towards a comprehensive amendment to deal with the other ozone depleting substances in our statute. South Africa retains its relations with Brazil, Russia, and China on a sound footing, and thus South Africa's national interest should not be compromised as a result of those agreements. And the meeting will be held on the 12th to, to the 16th of November in Geneva, uh, 2012. Cabinet was also briefed on the progress on the preparations for South Africa for hosting the fifth BRICS summit in March 2013. The envisaged key summit outcomes and deliverables are the launch of the new development bank, the BRICS Leaders Africa Dialogue Forum, and the launch of the BRICS Business Council. Cabinet also received extensive briefing regarding the first meeting of the National Nuclear Energy Ex Executive Coordinating Committee. It endorsed the proposed phased decision-making approach for implementation of the nuclear program. It also endorsed the designation of ESCOM as the owner-operator as per the nuclear energy policy of 2008. Cabinet also approved the nuclear communication and stakeholder engagement strategy to deal with all the issues related to this matter. <laughs> South Africa will also host the, the Global Forum on Innovation and Entrepreneurship in 2013, which will be hosted in East London from the 27th to the 30th of May uh, next year. Cabinet also welcomed the results of Census 2011 and commended the States SA on an extraordinary achievement of releasing the results within 12 months. While the results point to challenges, they are also telling a convincing story of a country that has greatly improved and developed in the past 18 years. And Cabinet calls on all sectors to use the results to better inform planning and implementation within their specific areas. Cabinet also welcomed the state visit to South Africa by the President of, of Namibia, His Excellency, Efegepunye Pohamba, who came on the invitation of the, by the President of the Republic of South Africa. The two presidents acknowledged the deepening of bilateral cooperation between the two countries in the fields of energy mining, water supply, environment, tourism, agriculture, trade and investment, infrastructure development, education, transport, science and technology, and defense and security. Cooperation in these areas is facilitated by the implementation of more than 64 sectoral agreements and memoranda of understanding which have been signed over the years between the two countries. During this visit, the following agreements were signed that enhanced the bilateral relations that exist between the two countries. Firstly, the agreement to establish a binational commissions which are supposed to be chaired by the two heads of states. Secondly, the memorandum of understanding and cooperation on issues related to the public works and infrastructure development. And thirdly, a memorandum of understanding on cooperation on metrology. Cabinet also congratulated Minister Pule 
Minister of Communication, and a department for securing two seats at the recent 25th Universal Postal Congress, which was held in Doha in Qatar. The appointments underscore the confidence that the international community has in South Africa and its people. They also illustrate South Africa's commitment to working with other African countries to advance the continent. As a result of these appointments, South Africa will be the first time member of the Council of Administration and was re-elected as a member of the Postal Operations Council. And Cabinet also congratulated all winners of the SA Sports Awards and commended them for their accomplishment in flying the South African flag high, both in South Africa internationally. And Cabinet also uh, congratulated all the winners of the annual Public Sector Innovation Awards hosted by the Center for Public Service and Innovation. Cabinet also welcomed the new series of banknotes released by the South African Reserve Bank. They present our currency as a unique symbol of our nationhood and honor our struggle icon and the first democratically elected President Nelson Mandela. And Cabinet encourages all South Africans to familiarize themselves with the security features of the new notes in order to enable to, to enable to identify their authenticity. Cabinet also joined the President of the Republic of South Africa in congratulating President Barack Obama and wish him success in his second term as the, pres as the President elect of the United States of America. Cabinet also approved the following bills. The determination of remuneration of members of the Constitutional Institutions Bill. Judicial Matters Second Amendment Bills. Legal Metrology Bill. The National Environmental Management Integrated Coastal Management Bill. And the Banks Amendment Bills. And also concluded by appointing uh, Ms. Jenny Schreiner, Jennifer Schreiner, as the Director General in the Department of Economic Development.